Are you or someone you know in the middle of a career transition? My guest says knowing your values is the key to finding the right company culture to fit in. So please stick around and enjoy the show. Welcome to another episode of Coffee with Tea. I'm your host, Tanya Tyler, and I'm excited because I'm going to finally be able to catch up with Miss Noah Ronan. We we connected earlier, but it's been a little while since we, we, we <laughs> yeah. disconnected and we're back together. So again, welcome to the show, Miss Noah. It's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm so glad to be here with a coffee lover and a runner. I'm not a runner as you, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, like we were um we were just talking about um a little bit about my story but you know it's not really about me. I always like to hear what brings you to the show and mm-hmm. if we're podcasting and stuff like that. Miss Noah, tell us a little bit about who you are, um a little bit about how your story is. What what is your message that you want to share with the world? I want to know. So the floor <laughs> is yours, as they say. So people know already that I'm a coffee lover. I love coffee. And actually what what keeps uh my husband and I um awake during this COVID, we have this little adventure where we go every weekend after a long walk to try a new coffee shop in our area in Raleigh. And we see that there are a lot of good coffee shops in our area. That's cool. I am an executive coach and leadership coach. Oh, sometimes I call myself your out of the box coach. And I'm also an author. I published a book a year ago and a speaker and a new podcast lover. I just enjoy being a guest on podcast and, and just having awesome conversations, real conversations. And my clients are social leaders, executives, and my sweet spots are the organizations that are going through constant change. You know, those places where they move from startup to 50 people, from 50 to 300, from 300 to 1500, because things are just changing and changing and changing and changing and it doesn't stop. And as you can hear from my energy, (laughs) that's where I enjoy being. Um, And if you hear an accent, I'm originally from Israel. And part of what I learned from change is um, I went through a change myself after being a change management consultant for many years and working in human resources and training and development we moved to the U.S. from Israel, and then I was stuck for five years. So I learned a lot about change, what's happening to you emotionally, internally, mentally, when you go through change. And now when I work with people through change, I have extra tools that I didn't have when I was a change management consultant. Oh, that's great. Like I, I, so I love your story, and oh, congratulations on your book as well. Thank you. So you you really help people transition. So the, you mm. go from the small to the end to the beginning. So you see a lot of potential that people can grow into. Is that what I'm hearing? I love that you brought the word transition, right? Because change is that umbrella and transition is that mental, ex- that mental experience and emotional experience that we go through. And that's a long and exhausting process. And, you know, they, they even call it, I forgot the word for it right now, the neutral zone. There is that neutral zone. So there is that ending. There is that neutral zone that nothing really happens. I call it the chewing gum space where you just like chew the gum and you chew it and you chew it and there's like no taste and nothing, but you are there and you're stuck with it. And then there is beginning and beginning is very different than start. I can put you on the start line but you need to want to do that work internally to begin. And many times when I work with people, they say, thank you so much for helping me getting promoted or, you know, flourishing with my business or taking my leadership team to the next step. And I say, you know what? I appreciate that. But the real deal about doing this work is you showing up constantly to do the work. And there are some sessions where it feels like nothing is moving. 
and there are some sessions that are exciting and there is that, you know, aha moments that happening to you, but I can give as a coach the best tools to ask the best questions. But if there is no one on the other side that wants to do that work to transition, nothing will happen. So in the end of the day, you can be the best coach. If there is no one on the other side that willing to do the work, it will stay the same. I love how you mentioned it. Cause like you said, I know a lot of people who, who say I, I, their change is not for them. So h- how do you, how do you, <laughs> how do you, you know, tell people that, you know, because in, in essence change is all that we ever go through constantly. So how do you handle those people? Like, you know what? I, I'm just not down with this change. You know, what would your advice be? You know, cause life is always changing. I I'm pretty, I'm so Israelis are honest. Now being honest doesn't mean that you have to be mean, right? Uh, so it's not about being mean, but sometimes I will say maybe it's not the culture for you because this is an organization or a situation uh, because sometimes it's life, sometimes it's choosing, you know, I, I want to start my own business and it's like, ah, so, but, but, you know, if we talk about changing an organization, there are different cultures. You don't have to work in a startup or an organization that every day you come and it's shifting. And by the way, there are now big organizations um, like Salesforce that their culture is to keep this huge 50,000 organization people as a startup. So it's every day you come and it's shaking you and it's not for everyone. And it's the same with values, right? It's the same with vision, with culture, with spirit. We are different people with different needs. And it's okay if this is not your space. Go and be in a a space where you can thrive. Now we go through change in life, but for some people just being in that constant experience is not healthy and not serving them. And it's the same with with um, values. You know, if I work in an organization that don't value differences, so maybe that's not the place for me to be. Right. And that's so, okay. I, I want to talk a little bit about, because you brought up a whole um, concept that I, I never really thought about, I guess, when you're in your job search. And a lot of people, you know, a, 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 a startup company is going to be a lot different than, say, an established company who's been around for like years. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so, so when you're out there doing a, a job search or, you know, cause I know you, you're doing within the organization, but for those who are like looking to like go back and we're starting, you know, cause we're coming out of this whole COVID and they're starting to look at like, what, what kind of culture is good for me. When you're saying, um, look at your values, you have an idea of like what kind of company to go for. Is that what exactly. you're like looking to do? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> By the way, I do that work with people inside companies okay. too, and people who come to me and say, I'm confused, I'm not sure what to do, I'm, I'm lost. Uh, we, we look at values. When we have conversation about values, about cultures, what's important to you, um, you know, some people even want to go into the life purpose. And I tell them, even if you don't need it right now, and even if you choose to move inside this big corporation, or move to a different company, have those values with you. Because today, I, you know, our I'm, I'm a Generation X. Generation X didn't ask question when they went, questions when they went to an interview. It's like, okay, you ask me the questions, I answer, I'm being a good boy, I'm being a good girl, right? Those new generations, the millennials, the, the Z, they come with a long list of questions. And I love that. They know what they want. So when I sit with them, I say, okay, let's look at your values. If one of your values is building relationships or work-life balance or whatever it is, ask questions to that person that's going to manage you, to that organization to get an understanding of what are their values that you can choose to work in an organization that is aligned with your values. By the way, in big organizations, it can be very different marketing area or even development, you know, that doesn't matter. The, the, the experience can be different even between managers. So it's very important that when you go, part of the research is to say, uh, to ask questions that are aligned with your values and see what they answer. 
And right. that's, that's the work to know what to ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, this is the part where I, I like to um, let everyone know that if you're enjoying what Noah's putting down and you're picking up those gems, please give us a thumbs up and let us know by following up maybe with a question because we're going to dive in a little bit about, you know, I'm old school, so I, I claim that. So for those who are like looking and transitioning into their like um, – new job search and stuff like that. You say ask questions. Now my question comes down to, because it's like in our old mindset, if we're asking questions, a lot of people get frustrated while asking questions. So is that a good thing or a bad thing to start asking questions? You know, because like in our, in our minds, we, like I said, we don't ask questions because we don't want to um, offset our chances. So you're saying now maybe possibly the ask questions, it's a good thing. Is that? Yeah, I, I do believe. <laughs> and I, and I see people when they start asking questions, they, it helps them, you know, because there is that concern. How do I know that I'm getting myself into a good adventure, right? Uh, so if you don't ask questions, you might take yourself into a disaster. And I do believe that organizations today uh, appreciate people who know what they want. They don't want the people that then start saying, I'm not sure, I don't know, I don't know what to decide. And, and I see that from especially our generation, directors, VPs, they are being interviewed. And I, then we sit together and they say, I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure if that's the right place for me. And I asked, what did you ask them? I didn't ask anything. They just ask me question, questions. So definitely it's more than okay to ask questions and be in the right place because in a way, there are organizations today understand that it's not just them choosing you, but you also need to choose them. Because if you are conflicted, you will not stay for long anyway. So it's a waste of their time. I was just thinking the same thing. If you don't ask questions, it's a waste of their time. Because, But then also, I, I like what you're saying is because if you're asking questions, not only are you putting it out there for you to think about, you know, then you're starting to like get a little more clarity about what your values are about. So it's like, it's, this is a golden opportunity, like you said, because you're not only interviewing to be there, but see if there's a culture for you that might help you for whatever you want down the road, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So that's the golden time to, to actually in the interview is have a conversation, right? Of course, of an course, interview because, is mainly a conversation. Because right? if not, you get if not, you get just the very shallow experience. And if you start asking questions, and and that's what you're doing right now, right? You're asking me questions to get to know me and my ideas and where I come from. And curiosity is the best tool to establish relationships and let go of judgment. Curiosity is the is the, the, the medicine for judgment and the medicine to establish relationships. So the more curious you are without being annoying, yes, it's not <laughs> becoming annoying, but the more curious you are, the more you get an open conversation. And today, interviews are moving into that. P uh, organizations understand that they cannot uh, create the same experience for people. People want to choose differently. Uh, they are more... Uh, opinionated about where they want to work, how the organization should look like, and that's okay. It's okay. Right. I love it. I love it. I, and I've never even thought about that. So you're already dropped a big gem for me. Listen, so. I didn't think about it too, <laughs> but then. <laughs> well, tell us, Miss Noah, would you like to like share? I mean, because you you got into this whole subject because you 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 know you're change. I say change expert to a certain thing but how how hard was it for you to make this change when you said you when you came here uh, from mm -hmm. Israel to to make a change so is it like that you had the experience or how did you get into this whole change as your your um I guess your your career <laughs> you know I know you said you, so, you were yeah, already doing it there there are but, two yeah, yeah there, are, there are kind of like two rounds to it the first round is in Israel um working actually with com big companies that brought technology, very expensive technology. And then the CEO tells the C-suite executives, you need to make sure everyone is working together that uh, we get return on the investment and people are using the technology. Now I'm talking about 20 plus years that people understand how old I am. And then people were afraid that when technologies come, 
they will be laid off. So I was very young and I sat with C-suite executives, you know, having all the politics and all the conflicts and the resistance and everything that is happening when you bring new technology and things work and don't work and help them work together and learn so much from them. And on the other side, I see that human experience of people just afraid of the change and what will happen to me. And having that experience in such a young age, I I was lucky just to learn from the executives and learn from from that emotional um, process that people went through and being being able to work through that with the organization. So I was very lucky. And I also, my my mentor, the, the woman that owned the business taught me a lot. So I was lucky to learn that as kind of like the first phase. And then my husband get a job opportunity in New York City. We, we decide to pack the family and move for two, three years experience, 15 years after I'm a citizen and my kids are more Americans than Israeli. Um, and I think everything will be fine. I'm already in an executive role in Israel. What could be that complicated? Apparently it was. I couldn't find jobs that were fulfilling for me. And what I know today that I didn't know then, that for me, my forte, my strength, at least how I saw it, that I was an influencer. I knew how to get into a room and speak and that people will follow my ideas. And think about it. I was in my young 20s when I was sitting with C-suite executives and I impacted them. I influenced them. And I knew that I know how to do that. And suddenly I moved to a new country. English is my second language. It wasn't bad. So don't think I was like, you know, I couldn't say three words together. It was fine. But in my head, it was not good enough. And with that, I went to interviews, going back to the interviews conversation. With that, I self-sabotaged myself. And that's, that's when I learned on myself that it might be easier to take others through, through um, change, but it can be very hard to take yourself through change. And what I know now that I didn't know is that we go through grief and there are lots of emotions that we experience in time of transition. We are grieving the person that we left behind and we need to redefine ourselves. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to replicate that person from Israel and have the same Noah in the US and it just didn't work. Um, so that's how I um, you know, got into coaching because I tried to do everything the wrong way for five years. It didn't work for me and I took a break, had a third child and started blogging. And when I started blogging, people started reaching out to me and ask me to coach them. And I started with people like me that were just stuck in transition until I got back to work with organizations. So I I worked with a lot of people that felt stuck because they wanted to move, they took actions, but that other energy that I shared with you before Uh, That other energy that I call the being energy, which are the emotions and thoughts and mindset and fears was not engaged with the doing energy with our actions. I believe we have these two energies, the being and the doing, and they were not engaged. And that's why I didn't see results and the people I work with didn't see the results they want. And for some of us, it's the doing energy that is very strong. And for some of us, the being energy is very strong. Right, right. I, I like I said you you dropped a, a bunch of nuggets for me, and I know <laughs> twenty minutes is not enough. So I yeah. would love to have you come back and ex- we can actually dive a little bit more into it. But you know, we still have a little time. Tell us a little bit about your book. What's what's what yeah. that? So my book is Beyond Leadership, and I'm actually playing with the idea of the be the being, and how can we do that work when we have blind spots to become more aware. And, and I play with three parts in the book, the aware less, what I don't know that I don't know, and how I get to learn that. Then there is that aware mess. How do I 
get to know, and there is a lot of messiness there to, to figure it out. And then there is awareness. And actually, it's not a, a linear experience. We are going in and out. Awareness, 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 aware, we, we are moving. And the best uh, uh, example I can give about that is when we drive, right? When we drive, there is that experience that we know where we are, right? And then suddenly we are 20 miles further the way. And how did I get here? I didn't even notice. So we have the same experience with things we work on. There are some areas where we are awareless and then we come back to awareness. And we never, I believe we don't go out of it, but we can learn how to do the work to identify where we slack back to old behaviors and bring ourselves back to awareness. So it talks about how the, the book talks about how we create that awareness. And when we learn that, then we can go to what I call beyond leadership, where you learn how to do that with others. For example, values. I have my values. These are my lens. This is how I see the world. But you, Tonya, have different value, core values. And if I judge you for my values, I hurt our relationships. And that's when leaders need to know to look beyond their values, beyond their vision, beyond themselves, that they can engage and inspire others and help them grow to be their best selves. So that's kind of like the gist of, of the idea in the book. I love it. I love it. Like I said, I would love to have you come back and like I said, explain. I would love to come back. We, <laughs> come didn't back. Even, we didn't talk about running. We didn't talk about coffee. <laughs> we got so much stuff we haven't even hit on yet. So I want to leave, where can people find more information about you, your services, your book and everything like that? Where can we find you? Just Google my name. No, I want it. No, I'm just kidding. Go to my <laughs> website, Noah Ron and Coaching. Just check me, check the information there, learn more about me or social media. It's Noah. There is no H. So Noah, N-O-A-R, coach, Noah, our coach, social media. And just say hi and let's have a conversation. Let's start there. I love it. I love it. Again, thank you, Ms. Noah, for being here. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and your insight for, with us. Really do appreciate it. Thank you, Tonya. I had a great time and I love your energy. <laughs> Thank you. And I will remind everybody who tune in, remember, feedback is always welcome. Emails if you have any guests or show ideas. Links to all the, the sites that Noah mentioned will be posted down there in the description box. So please, please check them out there down below. And remember, again, thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed all the insights that everyone, especially what Noah said today, Hit that subscribe button over there. And remember, take things in stride, go with the flow, and create your own path. And we'll see you back here on another episode of Coffee with Tea. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Posted on all the great things happening with Coffee with Tea on Confident Strides, please check out the Confident Strides website at confidencestrides.com. That's C O N F I D E N T S T R I D E S dot com. And thank you for listening. <laughs>